Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a look at the slideshow module that's found in Lightroom Classic CC. In our last video on the book module, I recommended that you begin in the library module. I make that same recommendation here. When you want to create a slideshow, start in the library module and create a collection and put all the images that you want to be in your slideshow in that collection and put them in the order that you'd like them to appear. Once you do that, then if you want any text to appear along with each of the images, I recommend that you put the text in one of two different places. One is either the title or the caption. You actually could do both. In this case, I have a bunch of images of primates. And I have the name or the type of primate in the title. So you can see this is a tufted capuchin monkey. This is a western lowland gorilla and this is a black-handed spider monkey, and so on. So once I've done all that, I have them in the order I want them in, and I've given them the names or the titles or whatever, whatever text you might want, I have it in there. I'm going to then head over to the slideshow module. And once you're here, there's a lot of options. And we're going to start with the right-hand column, go right up to the top, and the first one is Zoom to Fill Frame. If you click this, Whatever dimensions your image might be, it will zoom in just to fill the whole frame. So it's going to crop away some of your image. So you could see in this image here, we could see the bottom of these ropes. As soon as I click zoom to fill frame, it kind of cropped it so it fits the outer sides of the frame. So if you want that, that's fine. But I just want to caution you if you have a vertical image such as this, and you have zoom to fill frame clicked, you could see it zoomed way, way in. You may not want that. So on these images, I'm not going to have zoom to fill frame clicked. Stroke border. When you click this around the image itself, you'll see a slight border and you could adjust the width of that border by moving that slider. And you could adjust the color of the border by clicking on the little swatch there. And then you could pick a color, any color, you could even pick a colorful color, whatever you like. In this case here, I do not want any stroke border, so I'm going to leave that off. Also, you could have the image itself cast a shadow on the background. Now, I have a black background, so you're not going to see it. But if you did, you would click this box. If you had, let's say, a white background or a light gray background, you'd like the image itself to cast a shadow. You could Adjust the opacity of the shadow, the offset, how far away from the image does the shadow get thrown, the radius um, of it, the angle. You could use this little circular thing and where is, let's say, the sun located and it's going to cast the shadow in that direction. So you could do all that there. Of course, I'm not going to use it here because I have a black background. Now these little lines here, the horizontal and vertical lines, are the guides. You could turn those on and off right there. Also at the bottom here we have this link all. If I unclicked this and I take let's say this left slider and move it, you'll see it will move that left hand guide but not move the other guides. Conversely, if I do have link all clicked, I move one and they'll all move in the same proportion. So I could very easily just kind of adjust the size I want my image to show in my slideshow. There may be a time where you want to move one of the guides. You may want a logo on the left, let's say. So you'd unlink them by unchecking the link all box and you'd move the image over to the right and then you could put a logo or text or something over there. For this though, I want them proportional so I'm not going to... Um, move one without them all moving. You also, instead of moving the sliders, you could just go right on the actual guide lines themselves and you could draw them in or out or up or down, whatever. So that's the layout. 
Below that, we have Identity Plate. Uh, if you click this, you'll get whatever you have listed as your Identity Plate. If you don't have one, or if you want to modify one you already have, you would click this little kind of expose triangle. And you can see I have a couple. You could create your own or a new one by clicking Edit. And then this dialog box comes up, and you could create one here. Um, I'll use this, let's say. And there's a number of different places you could place it. You can see right now it's towards the top right. If I just click on it and drag it, you'll see it snaps thin to the middle. It snaps to the lower left, the bottom middle, the left-hand side, the left-hand middle, and so on. That's snapping it around the background. I also could put it right on the image. So it's in the top right-hand corner of the image, the right-hand middle of the image, the left or the right-hand lower right-hand corner of the image, and so on. So I could put it in a number of different places on the image or on the background. Also, you'll notice there's some handles there. You could grab the handle and you could resize it and make it however big, large, or small you want it. I'm not going to use an identity plate. You also, though, could come in here and change the color, um, override the color of your actual identity plate. I use white lettering there. You could click there. Click on this and click a different color if you wanted to there. You also could change the opacity here and change the size here if you don't want to use the handles. And as I mentioned, I'm not going to use an identity plate, so I'm going to leave that checked off. You also could add your watermark. We uh, have a video where I cover how to create a watermark. So I have this text watermark I already created. Um, again, I would refer you back to that video if you don't know how to create a watermark in uh, Lightroom, but you can see I could put a watermark on my image and I don't want to, so I'll leave that off. Also, if your image has a star rating and you want the star rating to show, just click on this box and you can see the star rating is there and I could change the opacity of the stars with that slider, how big or small the stars are with this slider. I also could change the color of the stars by clicking on that box and I could give them a color, whatever color I want but I'm not going to show star rating, so I'm going to leave that off. I do want to put a text overlay on the image, so I'm going to click this box right here, and you can see when I do, nothing really happened, and this down here remains inactive, and it's not really obvious what you have to do to get text to show up on your image. What you need to do is go down here to the toolbar. It's this little strip right here below the image. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your keyboard. It will turn that toolbar off and on. Right here where it says ABC, click on that. And you can see it has custom text. So I could add custom text to the image. But you may remember when we were in the library module, I mentioned that I gave each of these images a title. So you click on this little drop down here and you could see that I could do a caption. I could put the date, the equipment, the exposure, but I put a title. So I'm going to use title. And you can see it put the title randomly right there. You could move it wherever you like. Just grab it, move it around. I could put it on the image. I could put it below the image. I want to put it below the image. I also want to make it a little bit smaller. So I could just grab any of those handles and make it a bit smaller. Put it right in the middle. There's also right here, I could change the color by clicking on this little swatch. So I could make it you know, gray. I can make it, you know, any color I'd like. I'm just going to keep it white for this. Also, the opacity. Uh, right now it's at 100%, but I could, you know, make it less opaque. I could also change the font and the type or the face of the font if I want. It's italicized or bold or whatever. I'm going to leave the default font right there, and I'm going to leave it right there. And you can see now as I click through the images, the actual type of monkey or gorilla or primate will show on the bottom. So that's text overlays. Also, I could have it cast a shadow if I wanted to. Now again, it's on a black background, so it's not going to do anything. And I have the same options for this text shadow that I did for the image shadow, which was up here at the top. Now, the backdrop itself, you can see right now I have this solid black backdrop. I could click this little color wash, first of all, and I could give it kind of a graduated look. And I could change the shading of the graduated look by clicking on this picker here, 
or color picker and then I could pick something I'll just pick that and you could see how it's kind of given it this uh, graduated look and I could change the angle come in from the side the corner the top the bottom whatever looks best or whatever you like best and I'll leave it at the top now if I don't want to use a color wash I also could just use a background image so I could drag and drop an image from the film strip here and then it will go around the whole background and then I could change the opacity of that image with that slider I'm not going to use that I also could just put a color now I mentioned that a lot of times we could shade or put cast a shadow on the image or cast a shadow with our text and I wasn't really able to do that because I'm using such a dark background well if you click there and pick a different background color you could then very easily come in here and add shadow to the text let's say something like that I kinda like my color wash background so I'm gonna stay with that now below that are titles uh, an intro screen do you want to have uh, an, at the very beginning before the uh, slideshow begins do you want something to say something so I could click this intro screen and I could use then I an identity plate I would click there and you could see I have Anthony Morganti presentation series it just showed for a brief second I could change the size of it by moving the slider and as soon as I do it shows again you could see it there I could then override the color by clicking this box here go here and I could click white so I have that presentation series it will go away I could just change the size so I could have this open up my slideshow if I'd like it to I don't I don't really want an intro screen similarly you could have an ending screen and the same thing the same exact thing you could click it and you could add the identity plate in this case I have my name I could override the color if I want I could also adjust the size there and if you just sit for a minute or two it'll go away so I'm not going to have an ending screen either. But I do want to have music to play while my slideshow progresses. So I'm going to click this little plus sign. And on my computer I have a couple uh, music files uh, right here. They're just um, freeware music that uh, I found on the internet. And I'm going to select both of them. And I'm going to click choose. And you can see it brought them both in to the slideshow. I could just change the order by just dragging them in a different position if I want one to play over the other or play first before the other. Um, then down here we have the actual playback of our slideshow. We have automatic and manual. In most cases you're going to use automatic. Manual is if you're doing a slideshow presentation and you need to hit the arrow key or you want to hit the arrow key between each slide. So you may have one slide on, let's say this tufted capuchin monkey, and I'm going to talk all about the habitat of tufted capuchin monkeys, and I might talk for 15 minutes. Then I would hit my right arrow key and go to the next image, and I would talk about that. That would be manual. A lot of times, the settings you have set up here won't be compatible with manual mode. And you can see right here, manual mode does not support these settings. So most of the time you won't be able to use manual mode um, then when you reach if you are able to use manual mode when you reach the last slide and hit the right arrow again it will repeat go to the first slide or it will just go to random orders it will jump uh, from image to image uh, randomly we're gonna use automatic because manual wasn't compatible with the settings I had and there's a couple things you could do. How long do you want each of the slides to appear on the screen during the slideshow? Uh, by default, it's showing five seconds. So a slide will be on for five seconds. Then there's a crossfade of one and a half seconds, and the second sl uh, slide will come through. You could change either of those two settings by moving the slider. So I could have a slide go on for 10 seconds, up to 20 seconds, or down to one second. And then I could change the crossfade as well from one second from no crossfade at all to half a second one second whatever so let's say a second crossfade there's another thing you could do you could just sync it to the music so just click this box you can see all this gets grayed out and it will just sync your slides to the music and you know some will be a little longer some will be a little shorter it's just automatically done we're gonna undo that 
the third option is you could fit it to the music. And you can see right now, let's say I have it set to four seconds and one second crossfade. When I click fit to music, it's going to take the total length of all the tracks you have up here of music and click fit to music. And you can see that each slide now will be on for 8.5 seconds because it's going to fit the number of slides I have to fit perfectly to the length of music I have. The more tracks I add down here to the film strip and add to my slideshow, the shorter the slide length will end up being. Each time though, let's say I drag in 10 more um, images to the film strip, you have to click fit to music again so that it will recalculate the amount of slide length for the new slideshow you just added to or just created. So just remember to always click fit to music if you add to or take away any of the images in your slideshow. Now 8.5 seconds is pretty long. Let's, um, let's go with a crossfade of two seconds. So that is that. Now, of course in Lightroom, not only can you import images, you could import video. Similarly, in your slideshow, you could add video to your slideshow. Well, what do you want to do with that audio that is in the video? Do you want the audio in the video to play? So let's say I go three, four images, then I have a video. And I will, if I have it all the way to the left, then what will happen is the music from my slideshow will fade out and the audio from my video will fade in. Conversely, if I don't want that video audio at all to play, I would move the slider all the way to the right. Somewhere in the middle, we'll have a combination of the two types of audio you have, that video audio and your slideshow audio. So you could have, let's say, the video audio a little louder, if you have it towards the left, and the music audio will be a little quieter. So, you know, you'd have to experiment with that and preview your slideshow to see what it sounds like. The next is pan and zoom. If you don't have that checked, each image will just show and it will just be static. If you check it, the image will pan in or pan out or, or I should say pan left or pan right or zoom in or zoom out and it will be random. And you could have the amount of the panning or the zooming to be either low, if you have the slider way to the left, or relatively high, way to the right. Um, usually, I would recommend that you keep it relatively low. If you have these things zooming in and zooming out and panning left and panning right a great deal, it tends to make people a little bit nauseous. So don't um, move that too much. Now again, we have those, you know, we could repeat the slideshow when we're done. It will just start over again. Or we could have the images appear in random order. I have them in the order I want them in, so I'm not going to check that, and I don't want the slideshow to repeat. Now, we could preview our slideshow two different ways. One is with the preview button, and it will just appear right here. So Lightroom will stay open, and the slideshow will be previewed with the music, in this center area. If I hit play, it will black out Lightroom and the slideshow will play all on its own. So I'll try both just for demonstration to show you. So I'll click preview and you'll see that the music starts and there's our slideshow. And you can see how it's panning kind of a little bit to left, zooming in a little bit. Now this one's going the other way. So it will do that all random. Now, if you want to stop it, just click on the image and it will stop it. Now, the play button, conversely, when I click on that, and you'll notice too, I forgot to mention the quality of our preview. I have it on standard. You could do draft. It will just render faster or high quality. Of course, it will render slower, but you'll get a better preview or better looking preview uh, with, with that. I'll leave it on standard and we'll hit play. You can see it rendered pretty quickly anyway. So it kind of takes off where it's or it takes up where it left off and you can see it's doing the full screen and image after image so i'll want to stop it click on the image so now that we have our slideshow kind of set there's a few things we could do we could save this slideshow it will save save all our settings and save the images as well so i'm going to click up here where it says create saved slideshow when i do that this box comes up and I could give it um, 
you know, uh, primate slideshow. And I'm going to save it inside my slideshow collection. You can see I, over here on the left, I have a slideshow collection. I also could just make new virtual copies of the images, set it as a target collection so I could easily add more images to it if I'd like. And our, I could sync it with Lightroom CC, which of course is the cloud-based version of Lightroom. I'm going to leave those unchecked and click Create. And you can see there it is, my primate slideshow. Another thing you could do is you could just save the settings. It won't save the images. You're just saving the settings as a template. So we'll go over here to the template browser and we'll click this little plus sign. And when we do, we get this new template dialog and we give it a name. So I'm going to just call it my slideshow. I mean, anything you like. I'm going to save it in the folder users template and click create. And you can see it's right there, my slideshow. Now, finally, we could export this slideshow to a video or to PDF. If you export it to a PDF, it's just going to create a PDF of the images. Of course, the, the music won't be included, but we'll go with the export video right here in the lower left-hand corner of the left panel. And when I do that, this box comes up and down here we have a video preset. We have, do you want 480 by 270, 640 by 480, 720p or 1080p? Let's go with 1080p and I'm going to call this primates. And I'm going to put it on my desktop and I'm going to click export. And up here you'll see the export slideshow as a video that's a little status bar and that will go through create our slideshow. It does take a little bit of work so it's going to take a little while. So I'm going to pause the video. We'll come back when it's done and we'll take a look at it. Okay, if we look at our status bar, we could see we're just about done. It should be done any second. And when it is, your computer will make a dingy noise. I'm not sure it will come through on the video. But once that's done, any second. And I will say from beginning to end, as I started this export of the video, it probably took about three and a half minutes or so. And you can see it's kind of getting a little bit... Uh, slower at the end there for some reason and it's done okay let's find it it's on my desktop it's right here i called it primates remember and we'll click on that and we could play it and the music took a second to come in so i'm going to play for a second or two so you can see what we're dealing with and what we made And that's it. That is our slideshow. Uh, created a video for it. And I'll turn that off. And that's it. That's pretty much everything I think you need to do or need to know on how to create a light, uh, slideshow in Lightroom Classic CC. Thanks everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.